So here's the deal with how we're going to do the next set of episodes. Um, essentially, what we just kind of ran into here of having to get to level 35 and then kind of continue forward is, is going to be a theme. So not only do we have to get to level 40 for the next zone, but we're not even going to get close by just doing the story stuff. So here's, here's my idea. And obviously let me know in the comments if this sounds like it'll be um, enjoyable to watch or not. So we're literally just gonna push the main story for this episode, and we're just gonna do all of that. Then in the next episode, we're gonna do that gap between like 36-ish and 40, um, doing like all the, the riffs and everything. I think that will make for a more coherent series because it'll allow you to kind of get a better idea, Ooh, bunch of stuff, of what the current leveling cycle is like and then on top of that it also helps because you get um an idea of what things may look like in the future versus in the past so like if you're watching this you know months and months down and there's a new a beta maybe it's on an alpha anymore or maybe the game has already launched and then you could go back and be like ah oh, this is how leveling was it you know it gives you a pretty good reference point so we need to get our room that tablet holds one of the rooms there's an inscription. I awaken when nine flames burn bright. Making one as day makes others as night. Touching the tablet rekindles your plight. It's some form of test. Ugh, I despise tests. Best get to it. So this zone actually has quite a few puzzles to complete. They're not difficult, but here's, here's the... Um, Here's the solution for this one. In case you don't like these kind of puzzles, I get it. I totally get it. So you do all four corners. Boop. And then, boop. Okay, and then that leaves the middle one, you see, and then it lights the ones up that haven't been lit. Easy peasy. <clears throat> so in case you don't don't like puzzles, that's the, that's the solution to that one. You'll see the other solutions to the other puzzles as we go. But that's kind of the, I would, I would say the theme of the library is that, you know, there's a bunch of puzzles everywhere and you're able to um, kind of work your way through them at whatever pace you want to. You know, if you're bad at puzzles, uh, you could obviously just look up the solutions or if you like puzzles, then you could go through and complete it. They're not very difficult, but. It is just kind of nice. Also, there's a couple things to look out for while you're in this area, just as like a heads up. Because this is when you are starting to need to um, do the, the level management. Like you want to get as much XP out of what you're currently doing in the story as possible. Like if you want to push the story. Right? So just like before, our codex, which we're going to go to real quick, um, has the exploration area. Well, for, you know, the other ones, there's stuff like this too, but for the library, there is uh, blasphemous texts and um, there's also dusty tomes and then there's uh, spirits that you can defeat with braziers. Like there's a bunch of stuff here to actually do. So just as a, like a pro tip, if you know where that stuff is, you're going to get a little bit extra XP out of getting those and fully exploring this area because this area is not super huge but it is worth that it was fast. the second rune is powering the magic circle just over there defeat its guardian and it's yours okay easy peasy just right over here right yep i like I like that, you know, we have to go find these runes in order to get this thing working. But at the same time, it does kind of feel just like a little chore. I don't I don't really feel like I'm going on an adventure. But when you consider that that's what the Zolt Ghoul stuff felt like in Diablo 3, it's on brand. <laughs> it's really on brand for him. Not yet. Not All yet. of his stuff feels like a chore. It's like, do I do I really want to go find the pieces of your body? Not really, Zoltan. It's not fun. I don't, I don't like wandering the desert to find two caves. It's kind of annoying, actually. Oh, did I get it? No, it's uh, 
thought I did. There we go. It was taking a moment. All right, let's go over here, turn this in. And then, of course, we have the third room. The final room rests in a world that is a reflection of ours. Try not to lose perspective in there. Man, that's uh, real. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Cheesy. <laughs> I'll lose perspective whenever I want to. Although this part is kind of cool. So you'll see in a second here when we go into this portal, because that's essentially what it is. That we get Where thrown into. I? This place is cold, ruinous. Am I inside the mirror or beyond it? We can we get thrown into it like a reflection of where we just were, and then um, with this little puzzle, this place is affecting the room. It's we have to move field. mirrors. Wait, something happened when I touched it. Light. Now this is a, a I I want to applaud the immortal team because like if I go to these mirrors and I want to move them, which is what I'm gonna have to do for this puzzle, I like the UI pop ups because they actually do show you which way the mirror is gonna move. So like we want to push this one. All the way back. Uh, we need to move this one. Oh, wait, wrong, wrong one. I need to move this one that way to bounce that there. So we can move this one down there, which is going to go boop, boop, boop. Easy peasy. Oh, he, he said something. The echo said something to me, but it's backwards because I'm in the mirror. That's cool. I don't think I've noticed that before. I really like that. Oh, do I have to go out this way? I think I do. Did I just get a, oh, I did. Give me that amulet. Nice. Let's put some gems in it. Uh, let's go with the damage. I'm not too worried about our damage. I feel like we're, we're kind of crushing the content at the moment, but that is because we did just get a bunch of legendaries and we did upgrade our gear quite a bit. So like we're in a, it's good we're in a good power position. Again. Now to put this last rune in its place. In a way, it's kind of like in Diablo 3. If you go and hit like level 40 and then you got a um, a rare level 70 item with a you know reduced level requirement of 30, you just feel super powerful. We're not at that level of power, but that's what it feels like. My strength returns to me. I can feel the magic coursing already. Now for our arrangements. In order to restore the library, we must bring the central core back to life. We should head there and see the damage done firsthand. Only once the core is active will we be able to find the knowledge you seek. Shall we head forth? Yes, we shall. Although, along the way, <clears throat> I'm totally gonna kill rare groups. <laughs> That was awesome. I'm not sure what happened there, but it just kind of exploded into slimes. And it felt real good. Pick up Lana, give me that item. I'm debating if I want to switch these. To ensure his library's continuance. It is a dull but vital task. I'm debating if I want to switch these controls up to automatically pick up yellow items or not. Because we're, we're at the point where we're starting to get quite a few more dropping. Um, heck, we're even going to start getting rare. Ooh, should we go do this? I think we should. It's a little side thing. Which can give us more XP. And a few items. Uh, there's something there crumbling. Oh, I, it, it literally, I didn't even touch the screen. It, it went that fast. Is it because I was in combat? I think that's what it might have been. No, no, nope. oh, ow, yet. I'm stun locked. Ow, stop it. Stun lock. There we go. Ooh, monster essence. All right, now let's talk. Can't talk in combat. Can't talk in combat. There we go. Invaders claimed explosives, walls damage, structure crumbling. We're not gonna let that happen. Take me to them. 
uh, obstruct invaders, defuse explosives. All right, easy peasy. Although I wouldn't expect my monk to be a explosive defusal expert. But you know what? If I'm over here fighting demons, why not? That's what I say. Oh, that one blow up. Why did that one blow up? Support lost. Active explosives remain. Risk of collapse remains. There are more explosives. Uh, vestible at risk. Urgent. Okay, fine. We gotta kill the bandits. How'd the bandits get in here? Hold up. Wait a second. Wasn't it, it like super hard to get in here and we had to like get the way unlocked and everything? How'd the bandits get in here? Did they, have, did they follow us in? That doesn't seem right. More explosives. Right, that's fine. That kind of seems like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> like it shouldn't be bandits. Like it should be something else. I don't understand why the, uh, they, they must have followed us in. It, we haven't been in here very long. Damn looters. Although I suppose, technically speaking, why is this not doing the bomb? Oh, I must have been lagging. Yeah, that's, I think that's what that was. Um, technically speaking, if, you know, you're playing the game like we are and you log out or you go and do a bunch of other stuff and you come back, that little side option is available to you. So it would make sense if, if it was the case where it's like you've been exploring this area for a bit and then you finally saw that, you go and do it. Just seems like a weird, um, yeah, it's it, like I shouldn't find bandits in here. Also, we are doing, um... Uh, a bunch of bounties. I went and picked them up, knowing that we were going to have to do them anyways. Safety assured. Sharing a stockpile. Give me that chest. I'll take it. Not a whole lot of stuff, but I'll take it anyways. There's also a rare group in here. I'll go take out. Blow them up. Ooh, monster essence. I like it in the monster essence. Also, you know what? I quite like this generator that we're using or this primary attack that not we're yet. using not yet. because oh you know what i actually just realized how how long have i been playing diablo Immortal? let's hear i played it at blizzcon 2018 2019 i played the entire technical alpha or as much as i could and then i played it now i only just now realized that i don't have a resource Central core That's weird. serves as the heart of the library and maintains its defenses. Don't break anything unless I tell you to. Just as Just, I, thought, oh, I thought I was going to read it. Is dormant. Hold while I reawaken it. I like the consistency of art between work. Diablo 3 and here. Uh, I hate it when things don't obey my command. Uh, yeah, so that that's an interesting thing to realize this much into the game. Like, just straight up don't have a resource that I'm used to having. Oh, can I put that ring on? Has it been damaged? No, something is escaping us. The core powers all of the mechanisms within the library. If activated, I could remove the barriers between us and the secret archive. But it refuses to heed my command. Our only course is to obtain the Master's Journal. It details the inner workings of the library. But that knowledge has been kept secret from me. It is held within the well of knowledge to the west, beyond the magical barriers that restrict my movement and some of the Master's more unfortunate experiments. If we are to proceed, you must obtain it. Okay, we can do that. Hurry back, if you would. I despise not having all the answers. I just like walk away while he's in the middle of talking. Get out of here, Zoltan, you know what I mean? Uh, Cool's Hidden Chamber, Lost Page Collection. Search the library for more Lost Pages. I, d I think you get the Lost Pages from dudes that you have to kill. I believe so. 
Uh, but we're obviously going to go find out. So it wants us to go this way. Um, yeah, not, not having a resource is very unlike Diablo. Like, you know, you think about Diablo 2 and Diablo 3. Like Diablo 2, everybody had mana. Diablo 3, each class had its own unique resource. Like the, the Demon Hunter had the Hatred and Discipline. The Monk had the whatever it was called. Actually, just completely escaping the name of it right now. <laughs> can't, can't find it. In my head, the filing system in my head is, is, is broken. But then, of course, you know, you had things like the um, essence from the Necrovancer. And all no, that's pretty unique. But now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, oh, what if we don't need resource systems in Diablo 3 or Diablo 4? For Diablo 2. I mean, those games are critical with them, I think, because of the way that stuff is built. But in future Diablo games, do we really need a resource system? This is working fine, and I didn't even notice that I hadn't had a resource system until just now. After all of these hours, I haven't noticed that we did not have a resource system. That is ridiculous. I think that's a testament to design. That the game can still continue to exist and feel very much like Diablo, but not break the game for not having, you know, this, this system that is crucial to the other games, but it's just not here. And I didn't even notice that it wasn't here. I, feel like I can't stress that enough. That, that actually blows my mind. Here's one of the texts, by the way. I know where like a handful of them are, but I think when the game gets close to launch, I'm going to do a full guide system of all of these. So that way, if you're about to pick up the game before it launches, um, I'll have a full thing where you could be like, okay, where's all of the collectible stuff in each zone as I'm leveling up? So I don't really have to worry about the, the grind in between zones as you get to that point. Let me get this waypoint. Now, I, I am just gonna go ahead and do a full exploration of this area. So I'm gonna run up to the biofin um, uh, waypoint thing. I think it's just a teleport, it's not a waypoint, yeah. So that way we've got that terminus unlocked. Clear these guys out. And we'll dash down to this area. I think I also have to go south there. Yeah, I do. Um, then I think there's more blasphemous texts down there too. From my recollection. Is that an upgrade? Yes, it was. Hey, you know, actually, a um, little bit of a suggestion. When an item pops up like that, that I see on the right side of my screen, and it's like, hey, you just got this new thing. It would be pretty cool if there was just a little arrow there telling me whether or not it was an upgrade. Because then I, then I don't even have to worry about going and looking. I can just know, ooh, I got an upgrade. And I don't think that necessarily takes away from the joy of opening your inventory and being like, ooh, that was an upgrade. Knowledge. Yet knowledge has a heavy cost. And what okay. would that be? Well, learning is fun because knowledge is power. If you guys don't know what that reference is, you're too young. The ages and become a slave to it. Abandon the illusion of life and share in our eternal burden. You know what? I like Deadly Reach way more than I like Fist of Thunder. It feels really nice to use. Ooh. Lots of damage. Oh my goodness, that was nice. I feel really overpowered right now, which is fun. It's very fun. Okay, so we got that. Okay, that bunch of doodles. Resembles the core, but the rest is a mystery. Perhaps the curator can make this clearer. Perhaps, indeed. I think um, it would be cool for somebody, and I, 
the problem is I don't know many people who haven't played the previous Diablo games or even Diablo 3. So like most people I know have at least played Diablo 3. But I think it would be cool for someone who's never played Diablo before to play through all the games in order once Immortal comes out and once 4 comes out and kind of see what they think of the story and how much they get into it or don't get into it. Because stuff, you know, tonally stays generally the same, though visually changes pretty significantly. But it would be cool to see, like, someone who's never touched Diablo before, what what game ends up being their favorite after playing all the way through the series. I, I suspect you would get into a situation kind of like... um. Like, uh, what's a good example? Mass Effect actually is a really good example of people who have never played Mass Effect before and you tell them, oh my goodness, you gotta play Mass Effect, right? So they go pick up the trilogy and they play through the first game and then they get to the second game and as soon as they start the second game, they go, ooh, wow, the second game is good, <laughs> right? Because it is such an upgrade on that first game. But by the time they get to the end of, and this happened every single time I've ever had anybody that I know play through Mass Effect. You get to the end of Mass Effect 3 and they're like, man, that was such a fun journey. I loved it. I just got so involved and I just loved every moment of it, right? But they always say the same thing. They say, I, I just didn't like the first Mass Effect as much as I did the other two. Mass Effect 2 had the coolest story and Mass Effect 3 played the best. That's that's always the result of people that I get to go play Mass Effect. So I guess it's kind of a similar story to Dragon Age. Everybody thinks that Dragon Age Origins is just a solid 10 out of 10 game. They get to Dragon Age 2 and they go, oh, this plays a lot better than I would have imagined. And then they get to... Dragon Age Inquisition, and they're like, that that's a, an amazing experience. So, and maybe it's just Bioware games, but I, I suspect it would be kind of similar playing through Diablo. You would play the first game and it'd be like, that is, uh, that is a very dated game. In, in many ways, the original Diablo does not, ooh, we just got a weapon, um, does not respect your time. Oh, is it the, literally the exact same one? Oh, that sucks. Which one was this? The seven sided strike. Ah, that sucks. The, the original Diablo doesn't respect your time as much as like Diablo three does. And I know that's something stupid to say, considering it's a game that, um, is all about farming and just like grinding. Uh, what's your purpose here? Eradicate defective experiments, retrieve missing eradicators. All right. Begin exploration. Okay, well, we can help you out, Cinder Maker. Pretty easy for us to like AOE clear this stuff, so I'm not too concerned. Also, deadly reach. My goodness, I'm telling you, it's really nice. Oh, oh, you killed my golem, you bastard! Oh, that was a perfect spot to fight this thing because I can just dash. Back. Oh, I missed it on that one, but <laughs> just getting the double hits on dash there. Nice. Dash through. Hit him with uh, that. There we go. Oh, there's a chest in here, too. Yeah, let me talk to him first, right? Yeah, he's still locating things. Chest is right here. Give it to me. I'll take it all. Stash in. Suck everything up. Oh, I got hit there. It knocked me out of my deadly, uh, or my, uh, wave strike. That sucks. Ah, actually, I'm not getting hit at all. It's sucking me over there. I don't like this. It's not fun. Exploding palm is perfect. Nobody can tell me otherwise. I didn't think golems were capable of lying. Defective. Will repair other golems. Not that one. <laughs> sure. Need all that. I'm just gonna leave that slime. Let's go. Let's go push the the actual mission because we're just going 
and exploring at this point. Although there is a alchemical shrine. That's cool. It turns things to gold when you hit them. Oh, wait, I, I want to go north there. See, this is the, is the thing. I, I do want to make sure that at least for all future leveling, anytime I'm leveling a, a character or a new character or whatever, or, you know, let's say when the closed alpha stops and then we get a different alpha or beta or whatever it may be, I'm going to want to go and do, do the full zone explorations because it's helpful in more than one way. It gives you a bunch of, uh, what you call it? Like, uh, waypoints. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> My brain's just not on right now. And the waypoints help for when you're doing those gaps, you know, like 35 or 30, it will end up being like 36 to 40. Um, you have all those waypoints to get to your bounties. From. So it does save you time. Kind of like anytime there's a new Diablo 3 season, my suggestion is is always basically the same. Same is once you get to level 50, you're leveling up, you get to level 50, you go do all of the bounties, act one through five bounties, um, but you don't turn them in until you hit 70 because then you get a bunch of the, the, the jewel crafting recipes, which help to complete your seasonal journey because you're going to have to do that anyway. So why not kind of pair it up with the leveling process? So it does end up saving quite a bit of time if you're doing normal leveling and not like crazy uber fast leveling through rifts or whatever. So that's kind of my go-to tip. It's the same thing here. I think for leveling in Immortal, it's going to save a lot of time to get some of this collection stuff, this uh, quote unquote exploration stuff out of the way. And I don't think this is any different. You know, if, if I'm going through and finding all of this stuff on my map here, I'm going to have an easier time when I have to come back here and do bounties because the bounties are going to, you know, it, they're going to be spread out all over the place anyways, right? So if I'm just getting there as quickly as possible because I have the waypoints already, then that saves me some time. Also, we're revealed. almost done on golems for this zone. Not that I'm focusing on getting that one done. Like I said, in the next episode, uh, we're going to be doing the whole next like big level grind. And getting that done. Maybe not the next episode. I don't, actually, I'm not entirely sure how long it's going to take us to get this stuff done. Uh, let's kill Nox here. Oh, why you got to do that? And I guess I can hit the copies with Exploding Palm. So that's nice. Dies a little faster. Cool. Shoulders, huh? There's an upgrade? They are. Figured they would be. We have nearly a full inventory. Transfer those. We're going to equip this. Transfer that. Uh, yeah. All right. We're good on that. I, I should say, because it's worth mentioning, that you do get, like, the rings and the belts and stuff like that. You do start getting yellow items. And that stuff is also able to be upgraded. So if at this point you are watching me play through, you know, what we're doing here, it might be pretty safe to assume like, okay, but we've seen most of the leveling gear and like how the gearing system works and, and all that. But that's, that's not actually the case. There is um, quite a bit that you're missing out on simply by not seeing that those, you know, each, each slot can be rare or whatever they want to call it, yellow magic? Is it magic item? I don't remember. And then, uh, obviously, once you get all of those items equipped and you're upgrading them, or maybe they're all legendary, right? And you're upgrading them, then you're getting significantly more long-term end game stuff going where like getting your gear constantly upgraded and ready for the next thing helps make you feel like you're making progress on your character 
you know, maybe you could do a challenge with 50. This is, I'm just making up. So maybe you could do a challenge with 50. But that's pretty much the extent of your ability to run a challenge rift. Just because your gear's not keeping up. Well, by going through your weekly routine of getting stuff, there is a weekly XP cap, keeps that in mind. Uh, going through your weekly routine of getting stuff in this game, leveling up your gems and your gear and stuff like that, you will find yourself... Uh, feeling more powerful by the end of your week's routine to the point where you can then go and uh, do like a challenge for 51 or 52. And I think that that, you know, we've mentioned this before, but I think that's really important in an ARPG because it makes you feel like you're making progress. Like, you, you, like playing the game is worth it. But if you spend tens of hours even and don't upgrade anything at all, then it starts feeling less like you're making progress. Um, in a way, let's take this back to Diablo 3. Kind of talk about that for a second. Because in Diablo 3, you do get to the point where you're not making much progress anymore. Your gear is all ancient items or primal ancient items. If, if your gear is all primal ancient, then you're doing pretty good and you farmed quite a bit. But let's, let's assume your gear is all ancient or primal ancient. And you have high augments on all of your gear, which basically trashes a legendary gem to put the main stat on your gear. And you're feeling really, really powerful and you're pushing the leaderboard. And maybe you can do a, a greater rift 140 to a 150, 150 being the max. And you're feeling pretty confident about your character. You get to a point where it's like, there's not much else you can do. And in fact, if you look at the avenues of of your character in Diablo 3, ooh, it's a chest right here. Is it cursed? Yeah, let's do this. You can get a lot of stuff out of this. I'll wait for all this to show up. Then we'll blow her up. Oh my goodness, this feels so good. Oh, her inventory is full. Well, good thing we're about to get to a spot where I can get rid of crap. Well, that sucks. Okay, but we can open these. Cannot carry anymore. Yeah, I know my inventory's full. Um, I could pick this stuff up. Grab that enchanted dust real quick. And then I'm gonna run over here. This is a really funny situation to be in. Um, we're going to talk to him. He may give me an item that also is gonna fill up my inventory more. You have the journal. Yeah, here it is. Take that. 